Hi and welcome to another of the A-level screencasts and in this session we're looking at the evaluation of performance. So this is where you analyse somebody else's performance and predominantly today we're looking at the strengths and weaknesses section. So let's get started. So what I want to talk about first of all is the activities that are not advised. Notice there that it's advised, it's not actually turn around saying that you can't do it. So here is the list of the activities that they recommend not doing and part of the reason for that is you have to be um, quite a way away from them if obviously somebody's doing road cycling they're just going to disappear off into the distance so not very easy to analyze their performance and that goes for all of these they all have problems or issues so if you think about rowing exactly the same and climbing it's very hard to determine so recommendation not to do these doesn't mean say that you definitely can't okay so what you're actually doing for your analysis of performance is an interview and you'll be doing that with uh, an expert in your particular field um, so a PE teacher obviously and it will usually last around about 15 minutes now that's a guide not a rule some have lasted a lot longer but if you're a lot shorter than that you'd question how much quality you've got in there now what I want you to do is not panic because you've got to do an interview let's just walk through that process so what happens is first of all you will be observing somebody's performance and then what you'll be doing is making notes during that observation usually lasts for about 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes now with those notes what you're allowed to do is take those into your interview so you're allowed to have two sides of notes and within that you're obviously allowed to make reference to those within your interview as well so don't panic all right so an overview of what you're actually going to have to do for your interview after you've observed somebody is to look at their skills, tactics and the fitness assessment, so the strengths and weaknesses of each one of those components. You've got to identify a major weakness and then create a training plan. And then lastly is the potential adaptations to your training program and how you may improve your training and also how it can be measured. But we'll go into these in, in uh, the other screencast, but we're, we're going to be looking at this one first of all. Skills, tactics and fitness assessments, strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so fitness, skills and tactics. This is what it says in relation to the, spec, uh, the specification. So you've got to look at the quality and range of the acquired development skills. So we must recognize skills in the performance, the appropriateness and level of success of the selection of application of skill. And this is talking about strategies, tactics or compositional ideas, depending on what activity you're doing. And then it's the physical attributes. There's the key component right there. So what we have to do for each one of those is then come up with the weaknesses and strengths within somebody's performance. So let's take fitness to start with. First of all, here are all the fitness components. And what we'll be doing is observing somebody. So it's a live performance. It might be a video, but where appropriate, it will be a live performance. And if somebody you've not seen before, and it's uh, or the video that is something that you've not seen. So it has to be new material. So what we'll do then is we'll say, okay, right, fine. We've seen this guy, um, he's got speed. So we'll classify that as a strength. Power, okay, good, another strength. But in the same context of fitness components, we need to then say, okay, well, their reaction time is quite poor. Or so their balance is quite poor as well. Now, because you're only going to be watching them for 10 minutes, what we usually tell us say is pick three of each. So three strengths and then three weaknesses key issue here say what you see you can't elaborate on somebody's strength for example if the performer has not exhibited strength so it has to be what you've seen in that live performance and remember the examiners will probably be watching the same performance as well now here's the other thing as well try not to and again it's a recommendation pick muscular endurance or aerobic endurance the reason behind this is you may only be watching for 10 minutes. So how much endurance is that actually going to be demonstrated within a 10 minute period? I would like to think that most people who you would be watching can last for 10 minutes. So therefore you can't imply aerobic or muscular fatigue. So ignore those two unless 
there is a real reason behind it and you feel that it's an appropriate thing to do. Yet you're asking for trouble by picking these two. All right, so what's it going to look like? So when we're talking about somebody's strength, let's say power, first of all, we can turn around and say that it's a combination of speed and strength. That just shows depth of knowledge. And notice here, we turn around and say the player showed good power because when they had the ball, uh, at their feet, they were able to move past players quickly and force their way down the sideline, past the opposing, opposition defender, using their shoulder as well as pace. So what I've done there is I've said why it was good and I've linked it to the performance that I've been watching. Really, really important key that. Okay, so let's have a look at another one here. So we've got the components of fitness, we've got the performance that's taking place. So I see that this person, let's say we've got this, uh, this I think it's an Aussie here in the middle, is exhibiting strength and they've got great coordination. Um, sorry, we're saying a negative is maybe coordination, but for argument's sake, let's turn around and say that their um, their coordination is very good. Okay, so coordination. This is a strength because they're able to move the ball quickly from front to back of the stick while being jockeyed by the opposition. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, but I think we could add a better example by adding in technical vocabulary. So if there are certain terms in relation to your sport, use them. Why wouldn't you? Show off to the examiner. Tell them that you know about your particular sport and ensure that you're using specific terms and think about physiology. How could we bring in physiology into this? Again, just showing the examiner that you're really adept at the entire subject area. So let's change this then. So, okay, this is a strength because, absolutely essential, they had a quick pronation at the wrist which allowed the ball to move from front to the reverse stick technical vocabulary very quickly um, they were paying attention or the, yeah they were paying attention to the relevant cues like the opposition stick and then they were able to easily move the ball away whilst under pressure so hopefully you can see the subtle differences between those two examples all right so let's move on to skills here so for the skills section again say what you see and we ask you to name three strengths and name three weaknesses. So again, we're just making reference to this performance here. Now, what is difference, uh, different is between the skills and the fitnesses? We look at three phases, the preparation phase for the skill, the execution and the recovery. Okay, so it is a strength because in the preparation phase, she has her eyes on the shuttle, ensuring that she watches the shuttle onto the racket. Okay, so I'm saying why? it's good and then what's the outcome she watches the shuttle onto the racket and that's obvious to see there again I'm saying what I see so in the execution phase so this is when you're actually hitting or I'm sure you understand they are stepping forward which will increase the power so here we're looking at this leg that motion there from back to front is increasing the power as we hit the shuttle and again you can see that it increases the power of the shot I'm explaining what the impact is going to be on the performance. Now in the recovery phase, they are on their toes as soon as the shuttle is hit, which means they're in the best position to dominate the centre of the court. So as you can see here, they've returned to that ready position. Very familiar for anybody that does badminton. All right, so key component, preparation, execution and recovery of the skill. Make sure that it's just of that particular skill. Okay, so... Um, it is a strength because in the preparation phase, they have our, their eyes on the ball. Okay, so they have their eyes on the ball. Their opposition, for, the opposite foot is next to the ball and they're in a balanced position using the core muscles to act as a fixator. Okay, that's a good answer. It's ex said exactly what's happening in the preparation phase. It's told me that it's a positive thing and it's used this little bit of technical vocabulary as well just to throw in there. So that's reference to that one there, isn't it? So in the execution phase, they're using the side of the foot, so we can see that. And they're hitting the ball with the relevant pace. And then here, the reference to the performance. This makes the skill effective because it will ensure that the ball gets to the relevant player quickly. Good. Okay. And this. In the recovery phase, they're following through with the foot to maintain contact with the ball as long as possible. This will ensure that the direction of the ball is accurate as it will reduce any unwanted spin. Okay, good. Absolutely fine. So here what we could do is make reference to biomechanics. I'm talking about um, rotation or if we're 
hit it, hitting through the center of the ball. All right, so we could have added that as well, but I think that's a perfectly, um, perfectly fine answer for that particular skill. So say what you see, name three strengths, name three weaknesses. That's what we're looking for with the skills. Now, the last part here, strategies and tactics. So we've got this situation here where we've got Smith at the back over here. We're talking about that particular player. That's the one we're observing. So first of all is name the strategy. So a strategy is something that you would do before the game, something you've decided to do, a certain way of playing. Now, the strategy that I'm going to name here, because I can see this person using it, is drift defense. So I'm going to say that it's a strength, and the reason behind it is because, say what you see, I can see that Smith is calling his defense to drift across therefore reduce the amount of space out wide for the red team to attack. So what he's doing there, and I've heard him do it, is shout to these players here, and he's saying drift, 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 therefore they're moving across. And as he said, uh, what's, the, what's the impact on the performance? This enhances the team's cohesion and ability to defend the wide attack because they are reducing the amount of space out wide for the red team. So that's what he's done there. Okay, let's pick another one. So another strategy is that Smith is not over committing to the sideline. So he's not running over here, quickly trying to defend this guy, Taylor, um, near where Taylor is going to run. He's staying inside Taylor to prevent the players uh, with the ball kicking over the top. Okay, So that's the impact on the performance. He's not gone too far wide. He's staying there because he's covering that space as opposed to running over here. This forces the Reds to pass out wide where Smith can use the sideline to support his defence. This is a good tactic in defence. OK, so you can see what we're doing there is we're picking out strategies or tactics that we know about within this game. And we're explaining how Smith or whichever performer you're talking about is using it. OK, absolutely essential. Again, name three strengths, name three weaknesses. Lastly, then, we've got understanding and awareness. So let's take the wing attack here. So um, this person has good awareness because, so again, we're saying what we see. They recognize that the players were marked, so passed into the space away from the defender. Okay, So that's what they've done, and I've seen that, and I'm saying it's good because this enables the attackers to reset the attack and move the defense, which is very effective. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. The other thing that we need to elaborate on, just lastly in this small section here, is the overall effectiveness. So the performer was effective because they show good fitness, skills and strong tactical awareness. And then this will lead into the next section. So however, I will be focusing on their main weakness, which was their passing over distance. Let's use that as an example. And this is where we come into our development plan. OK, so at any time, go, um, pause the screencast or go back over it and have a look at each one of the different sections. But I would definitely say that uh, the key thing is saying what you see, making sure that you have three strengths and three weaknesses for each one of the different three sections. And then the last thing is to turn around and say, what's the impact on performance? If you do that, you can confidently walk into your EPIP and look at the strengths and weaknesses section. OK, in the next um, screencast, we'll be looking at the development plan. All right, thanks very much.